The following is a production of Yuchi Pines Lifestyle Training. What is hydrostatic pressure? As you can see from this image, water can be extremely pressurized. Why is this important? And how does it relate to our cardiovascular system? Our blood is 83% water, and thus a knowledge of fluid dynamics is essential to understanding dynamics involving the cardiovascular system. Case in point, in looking at the example of a water tower, this water is highly pressurized due to its elevation. Gravity pulls down on the water. Therefore, when valves are open to let this water out, there's a tremendous amount of pressure behind it. This is known as hydrostatic pressure. The pressure generated by gravity affecting and acting on the water in the water tower is actually what eventually brings it to your kitchen sink. Similarly, blood is pressurized in our circulatory system by the heart. Blood exiting the heart is of a very high pressure coming out of the aorta. The aorta is a very thick reinforced artery similar to a fire hydrant and a fireman's hose when we look at the whole circuit of water that flows from either a pump system or a gravity system. This highly pressurized blood flows through the aorta into the arteries, then to arterioles. These are a high pressure variety of the blood vessels. Thus, they are structurally reinforced and stronger than other vessels, such as veins and capillaries. What happens as blood is leaving the aorta is there is less and less pressure being exerted all the way down to the capillaries, where the least amount of pressure in the arterial circuit takes place. This decrease in pressure is a byproduct of two important factors. The first being the elasticity of the arterial vessels. Secondly, the arterial system flowing from the aorta to the arterioles branches off and actually increases in surface area in contact with the blood. What this does is it actually decreases the net pressure applied on the fluid. This is an important equation to memorize. This will help greatly in the understanding of how blood pressure works. Pressure equals force over area. It has been estimated that the average human has somewhere around 60,000 miles of these small capillary vessels. Given the fact that there is approximately 5 liters of blood in these capillary vessels that have a surface area somewhere between 800 and 1,000 square meters, we find that in actuality the capillary circuit could hold the entire average amount of blood in the body at any given time, which is 5 liters. Thus, some capillary circuits are closed down while others are activated. This is due to the fact that blood needs to be in the arterial circuit as well. And so if we had just 5 liters solely in the capillary bed, we would be deficient in the amount of blood needed to actually pressurize the system and, of course, reside in the heart to allow the efficient pumping action to occur. By the time the blood reaches the capillaries, the smallest vessels in the circulatory system, it is much less pressurized. However, there is still a hydrostatic force applied to the walls of the capillaries. This is due to the fact that the blood is still being pressurized through the arterial circuit. The pressure is being maintained by the elasticity of the arterial walls and also through the beating of the heart. This hydrostatic pressure 
exerting on the walls of the capillary is extremely important in bringing nutrients into the interstitial fluid. Pressurized blood plasma pushes against the wall of the capillary, thereby increasing the amount of solute that is able to travel through the permeable capillary membrane into the interstitial fluid. As the surface area increases in the capillaries, something very interesting happens. There is a decrease in the hydrostatic pressure exerted upon the walls of the capillary, so much so that the osmotic pressure, which is exerted by blood albumin pulling water through the permeable capillary membrane, is able to overcome the force of the remaining hydrostatic pressure thereby bringing nutrients into the blood. The remaining waste in the interstitial fluid that cannot pass through the capillary semi-permeable membrane, largely due to their size or other structural factors, will be eliminated through the lymphatic system if functioning properly. The lymphatic system is similar to the interstitial fluids vacuum system. Upon exiting the capillaries, blood flows back into the venous system, starting from venules, going into veins, proceeding into the large diameter vena cava, and returning once more to the right side of the heart. Thus we see the similarities between pressurized water to the hydrostatic flow from the capillaries in our own bloodstream. What's more important than this is that we have a source of nutrients. The Bible says the life is in the blood. We know that blood brings life. It brings good things such as oxygen and nutrients to the cells. However, cells also need to exchange good nutrients for waste materials. Left up to ourselves and separated from the giver of every good and perfect gift, we would become quickly filled with waste. This is why we must confess our sins and take hold of the eternal life the giver of all life longs to give us.